thanks, Sebi, and thanks, Parent Project, for allowing us to update you on the status of the development of GVNOSTAT. So, firstly, the disclaimer I'm an employee, uh, a full time employee of Vital Pharmaco. Uh, uh, GVNOSTAT is not currently marketed either in the US or any other uh, countries around the world. And obviously, this presentation is intended for dissemination and discussion of scientific information. Okay, what I'm going to discuss with you is uh, firstly the role of GVNOSTAT in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and then update you on the phase two study, and then tell you about the phase three study, which is starting now. Okay, GVNOSTAT is a, a, a histone deacetylase inhibitor that will uh, call HDAC inhibitor from now on. It is an oral suspension, so it is taken orally twice a day. It is a liquid suspension. And uh, because we have been uh, actually studying GVNOSTAT for uh, uh, um, quite uh, uh, some time, uh, we now actually have uh, a lot of experience in terms of uh, exposure in human beings. Uh, so as you can see, um, we have actually uh, tested GVNOSTAT in more than 500 uh, individuals in uh, uh, clinical trials. And as far as children are concerned, uh, we actually have been testing GVNOSTAT in two, uh, actually in three uh, studies in uh, pediatric population. 31 were uh, uh, children with uh, juvenile uh, arthritis, uh, and 20 are the uh, Duchenne uh, children that are in the phase two study that I'm going to describe uh, in a second. Okay, so how is GVNOSTAT expected to work? This is a cartoon that is trying to summarize what happens when dystrophin is not present in the muscle. As you know, uh, dystrophin is, uh, can be considered a shock absorber in the muscle, so the absence of it uh, actually uh, is followed by a repeated damage of the muscle fibers. Uh, as a reaction to that, you have uh, a, a, an inflammatory reaction that obviously in Duchenne is something that becomes chronic, so it's always present. And uh, uh, attached to that, you will have uh, uh, many other events like uh, uh, increased uh, muscle fiber necrosis, fatty replacement of the muscle fibers and fibrosis, and a reduced muscle regeneration. And the result of that is actually the uh, damage to the muscle that you uh, know and that is uh, pictured there uh, from a muscle biopsy. So uh, the way we believe GVNOSTA works is that um, it does not uh, work on the dystrophin, is not able to restore the dystrophin, but is actually working on the downstream effect uh, <coughs> uh, related to the lack of dystrophin. So what we have observed in the uh, animal model and also in the phase two study, in the muscle biopsy of the phase two studies, is actually a reduction uh, in inflammation, a reduction in necrosis and fatty replacement and fibrosis, and an increase in muscle regeneration. And so what we are hoping is actually that all these events will actually lead to a better muscle at the end. Okay, with that, let me move to the uh, phase two study. This is a cartoon that is actually summarizing the different studies that uh, are either ongoing or that uh, we will uh, start uh, uh, very soon. So uh, we have actually started <laughs> testing GVNOSTAT uh, in Duchenne boys in 2013 with the study that we call 43, which is a phase two study, which is still ongoing and that I'm going to describe in a second. Uh, we have just started uh, our phase uh, uh, three study and actually the first site in uh, the US has been open. And this is called study 48. And then uh, we, have, uh, we have submitted the uh, protocols to open the study 51 which will be a long-term safety study where uh, all the children enrolled in either study 43 or study 48 will go to once the study is completed and until the marketing authorization. Okay, this is a phase two study uh, called study 43. So this was, uh, the objective of the study was to replicate what we had observed in the MDX mouse uh, uh, biopsies. Uh, meaning that we wanted to replicate, see whether the effect that I described before 
that we observed in the muscle could be observed also in uh, boys with Duchenne after one year of treatment. Uh, we enrolled <coughs> uh, 20 boys, uh, aged uh, from seven to less than 11. Uh, obviously, there was no limit, no restriction in terms of uh, genetic mutation, and they had to be on stable steroids for at least six months, and they had to be uh, able to perform uh, the six minute work test with at least 250 meters. And uh, as you can read on, on the right hand side, we then, uh, once we completed the first part of the study, so after one year of treatment and we completed the muscle biopsies, all kids were allowed to continue on treatment in, a, uh, in an extension phase and they are still uh, ongoing and so now they are actually close to four years of treatment. Okay, this is a summary of the biopsy results, uh, as you can see, and uh, each column uh, within uh, each part of the uh, graph uh, represents one child, and the uh, black column represents the mean of the result. And as you can see, we have uh, observed an increase uh, in muscle fiber area fraction, so the uh, area of the muscle biopsies that is occupied by muscle. The reverse was seen for fibrosis, so a, a specular uh, reduction in total fibrosis, and also we observed uh, a reduction in total necrosis and fatty replacement. And all these results were actually highly significant. Uh, obviously, as we are now in uh, uh, close to the fourth year of treatment, uh, we can look at uh, some, uh, if you want, hard uh, uh, endpoint in terms of ambulation, and in particular, uh, we can count how many of the uh, boys are actually uh, have lost the ability to perform the six minute walk test uh, and the 10 meter walk. And as you can see, two boys, uh, so 11% of those are actually in that situation. And let me point out to the a mean age uh, of these uh, boys in study 43, which is close to 13 years. Okay, we can also then uh, start looking at other parameters that go beyond the ambulation, and namely pulmonary function. And this is actually summarized in this slide and the next slide. So these are the uh, force vital capacity uh, percentage predicted uh, value. And as you can see, uh, the results show that this uh, value is actually flat in this uh, three year of treatment. And obviously, as this parameter can be different uh, at the different ages, uh, on the right-hand side, you see also the split by age uh, at uh, study start. And as you can see in all group, even in the uh, group that started already at the age of 10, the uh, FVC is actually flat. If we then look at the, uh, po the other pulmonary function uh, test, which is commonly used, which is the uh, peak expiratory flow, uh, here we actually see uh, a, a trend towards an increase uh, in the PEF uh, percentage predicted. And once again, this is true in all classes uh, of age. As far as safety is concerned, this is a table of the adverse event uh, which we have observed. Uh, we actually uh, well know that the, uh, one of the uh, adverse events of Givinos, and actually of all the HDAC inhibitor, is actually a reduction in platelets. Uh, as you can see on the inserted graph, uh, with the adjustment of the dose, however, we can keep the platelets within the normal range, and this is uh, the result for study 43. The other um, adverse event which is common is actually diarrhea. What we hear from uh, uh, the kids in the trial is actually that they have more frequent stools, but actually that has never stopped treatment. Okay, let me then switch to the phase three study. So obviously based on these results, we went to discuss with the FDA and the EMA the next steps, and we have agreed uh, on the design uh, of, uh, of the next study which is study 48. Uh, this is the objective of the study is to demonstrate that Givinostar preserves uh, the muscle mass and slows down the disease. And this is actually done by measuring uh, functional tests and by uh, assessing the morphology of the muscle by MRI. Uh, in terms of inclusion and exclusion criteria, uh, once again, we have no genetic restriction. The uh, kids have to be at least six years of age. 
they have to be on stable corticosteroid for at least six months and be able to perform the forced air uh, climb test uh, in no more than eight seconds and the time to rise test in less than 10 seconds. And as you uh, can see in the cartoon over there, the uh, kids will be randomized 2 to 1 to uh, placebo or Givinostat. So uh, two kids will take uh, pl um, Givinostat and one will take uh, placebo. And the uh, treatment duration is of 18 months. Uh, the total number of kids uh, is close to 200. And uh, as I mentioned before, once the study is complete, uh, so once the kids have completed the 18 months of treatment, they will then move uh, on to study 51 where they will be treated with Givino regardless of what they have taken before. A uh, few more details about the study. Uh, once again, uh, obviously the uh, treatment is an oral suspension, so uh, the uh, kids will take the uh, treatment at home. And uh, they are actually being asked to uh, come to the site uh, for 15 visits. In the first three months, uh, the visit will be a bit uh, more frequent, uh, uh, every week in the first month, and then every two weeks in the following uh, two. Uh, the reason for that is actually that, as I mentioned before, if we adjust the dose properly, then the platelets will remain within the normal range but uh, we have a, a good idea of uh, which are the doses to be used. Uh, so uh, the starting dose will be adjusted to the weight of the children, but then we want to make sure that this is confirmed and uh, the only way to do it is actually to measure platelets. Then the muscle test, the, the function test will be done every three months and then uh, uh, the first uh, 100 kids uh, will have also to undergo MRI and that will be a thigh uh, MRI that will be done uh, at baseline 12 months uh, and uh, 18 months. And here is actually a picture of where the sites are in the US. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, we have opened the first site, which is in Iowa. And uh, uh, please notice also that the, um, there are obviously more um, uh, treatment sites than MRI sites. Uh, so the uh, kids uh, will have to travel to the MRI sites uh, uh, for uh, at baseline 12 months and 18 months. And obviously all the expenses will be reimbursed by us. And let me finish by thanking all the different people and organizations that have, uh, are involved in the development of Givinosta. Thanks a lot.